Hi, I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supplies, and today we're going to try these new Ice Point arrows at 18 meters. Um, and I'm going to talk about leading up to surgery, about five days, and I go in for open by bypass surgery. And I want to talk about going from hospital to home and how things have changed, and my diet and life and all that sort of stuff. Uh, leading up to it and we're going to see how we shoot. This is the first time I've shot these arrows at 80 meters and I obviously did a video yesterday where I shot them at 40 meters. I've moved the arrow rest back a little bit now to give a little bit more clearance to the front and we're just going to talk about that. So leading up to hospitalization, I couldn't walk next door to my neighbor's place. I was stuffed. I couldn't, um, I could shoot a little bit with the bow um, and not hurt too much but when I got out of hospital I couldn't shoot the recurve. I could only shoot maybe five to six arrows and I got fatigued and I have to go inside and rest. Um, walking outside on a hot day like today, today is very hot, it used to hurt my heart so it used to like just hurt. And um, people said that's more than common. Um, so we're going to sort of talk about what I've done since this time, the drugs. So I'm now on single blood thinners, not double blood thinners. So the doctor had me on double blood thinners I got big bruises on my arm from just pulling back the bow from the double blood thinners and I just felt exhausted with it. I felt like I had no energy, I felt terrible and now I'm back on single dose blood thinners and I feel much better. I feel like my strength is coming back, I feel like everything's basically better than ever. Um, anyway, let's shoot some arrows and we'll sort of see how this goes. Okay, so the first thing is I've been watching non-stop videos on health and blocked arteries and how you stop it and what's the causes of it. And um, so I've changed my whole diet. So no vegetable oils, no um, sugars, um, and no processed foods. So all natural, all natural foods, so meat and vegetables and fruits. And I'm now eating... Um, sauerkraut because that's meant to be really good for you and fermented foods i've made some sauerkraut um, i'm drinking kombucha um, which is meant to be good for your gut so everything that's meant to be good for your gut basically that's what i'm doing and it's i'm drinking these terrible drinks that are half a lemon half an apple um, turmeric a little bit of honey garlic because uh, it's meant to be really good for you so and I'm on lots of drugs, so and we'll talk about that. Okay, so my blood pressure was at 189 and over 117. Basically, I'm ready to die. Um, I'm on blood thinners, blood pressure tablets and some other blood pressure tablet and now my blood pressure is down to 117 over 70 which is really good. Um, my heart beats good. Um, so that's the first thing. So things feel pretty good now. Um, I think diet's made a big difference. I no longer have the sniffles. I no longer have asthma. That's all gone away. Um, so a lot of the things that the doctors were saying was you want to get rid of foods that could cause um, basically allergies or inflammation and I think by getting rid of that it helped my asthma and helped my breathing overall and I sleep better at night time so So before at night time, I'd be waking up in the middle of the night, lungs were tight, pressure on the heart. I now take a tablet at night time to keep things open. That causes massive headaches. It's terrible. I really want to drop that tablet. Um, but I worry about dying, so I haven't dropped it yet. So anyway, I wake up in the morning feeling amazing. Um, where before I used to feel kind of tired in the morning, where now I wake up feeling amazing, although I do have a headache. so. Um, so I would say in the last week, 
So today I've been on the treadmill and today I did three kilometers on the treadmill on an incline and I'm walking at about six kilometers an hour which is almost, it's not running but it's, it's a fast walk. Where before I couldn't walk a hundred meters, um, where now I feel like I'm kind of almost back to where I was before COVID. So after I got COVID, the most I could do on a treadmill was eight minutes on a slow walk. I did that once and I needed a big rest. But now, I, like I did 20 minutes yesterday on the treadmill, today I've done 30, 40 minutes. I'll go inside and do more treadmill. Um, I shot the recurve today, 56 pounds. Now I did fatigue after 30 arrows. Oh, look, I didn't shoot too bad, 285 indoor um, score. Um, look, I had some really good ends, but then I fatigue. Um, I feel like, oh, I'm going to shoot a really, like, the state record kind of score. Um, and then I fatigue out. So, but still, I'm happy to finish 30 arrows. Like, like I couldn't do it a week ago, so that's good. Now I would say about the change of diet, it's pretty simple. Like in, in the morning I have an egg with some avocado, some mushrooms, that's pretty much it. Sometimes I miss, miss breakfast. Um, for dinner I'm having salad with a bit of meat. Fish, like tonight I'm gonna have salmon with salad. Um, some sauerkraut on the side, that's it. Like it's, I have dropped some weight. Um, I'm at my lowest weight and I feel like I could drop more. Um, strength, strength wise, I have stopped doing weights, but I will go back to them because I watched a video and they said with cardiac, with cardiac things, you should really be doing like lots of walking and less weights, even though I was doing low, low weights, more aerobic weights, I would say. So I dropped all my weights by half and I was just basically just pumping out some. But I've just like, I thought, well, I'll just do walking and try and build up my lung capacity before the operation. Now I would say at the start of this, so, Getting out of hospital, I could shoot compound, but I run out of air because I didn't have the lung capacity that I used to, um, which is, you know, I don't have great lung capacity at the best of times, but it wasn't great coming out of hospital. So, but I could still shoot and I shot it okay. So my indoor scores uh, with compound coming out of hospital, I was shooting like 295s, 297, which is basically a kind of scores I shoot. There was lots of streaks of 60, 60, 60, and then I would throw an eight when I was fatigued. So, you know, instead of shooting a 10, I'd shoot an eight. Um, sometimes I'd shoot two eights. But overall, it wasn't too bad. I felt, I felt pretty good and it wasn't hurting my heart very much. Or it really wasn't hurting my heart. Now I would say in the morning I feel best when I wake up, my blood I take my blood pressure and then in the afternoon around 5 or 6 o'clock would, it would be quite tight. I'm not sure if that's because that's when I'm eating, whether it's the food making my heart tight, um, but that's when I'd be like pretty buggered and like I'd be fully asleep around 8.30. Um, the last two days. I've been still awake at 8.30 and feeling quite good, so i um, feeling less exhausted. So it's been quite a turnaround and I've asked the doctor whether it's the drugs or whether it's change of diet or a combination and he's going to get back to me. Um, 
So part of so, so part of the thing of going to have this surgery is I also have blood clots on my lungs from COVID, and that's an issue for them doing the heart surgery because I'm on blood thinners, so therefore you bleed more. Um, ideally, it'd be best to have the blood clots gone before surgery, but because I've got the left side blocked, it's um, they want to do the surgery first, but. So I thought it'd be best to ask the doctor what he thought because I feel like I'm getting better. Like I still feel it, um, but it's not like it was leading up to Christmas where I couldn't walk. It's substantially better. And I'd say um, when I'm in the grocery store now, I'm much more aware of food. So when I like, I used to buy dips. Now I look at the dip and I say, well, what's in there? And generally it's vegetable oil, so I don't buy it. Um, much more aware of stuff and eating just unprocessed food. Um, because all these doctors I watch, they all say the same stuff. Eat basic food like your grandmother used to make. You can eat butter, you can eat olive oil. Um, don't eat deep fried food. What's amazing is these people, there's other people who are overweight who eat deep fried food all the time and they don't have heart, heart issues. So part of it could be diet, part of it could be genetics. Um, But I wasn't doing myself any favors, favors by eating chips when I came home from work and eating cakes. So that's all finished. Um, let's go and see where those arrows are. Not too bad, there's one low, but overall I'm pretty happy with that group. Um, I feel like they're better back there than up at the target. A little bit to the left. Now, the target I'm shooting, this is the one I made with um, rags. And behind it I've got the bulldog target. Now you're gonna say, why have you got this? Well, the arrows which go into the rag target are really quiet. Um, with recurve, they were bouncing out of the bulldog target. Um, I shoot recurve a bit. That's just a bit quieter. Um, when I shoot compound with the rag target, they go through. So putting the bulldog behind it kind of holds it up and see sort of how much they're penetrating. It's quite easy to pull the arrows out. Oh, and the rag target's got a flatter target face. The, um, the bulldog target's more curved at the front, so this way I can get sort of more stuff to sort of aim at. All right, let's go and have another end. And... Okay, so leading up to surgery, um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about it for all those people. It amazes me how many how many archers have gone through bypass surgery. I got so many messages from people who phoned me up and like, I've been through this and. Um, quite amazing. Um, so anyway, before you go in for surgery, they're going to shave you down. So you're going to have no hair. Which is a good thing, because when you know, they stick those little tags on you to check your heart, and they rip them off, that's painful. It's like getting waxed. So. But anyway, the whole body is going to be shaven. So anyway, um, one of my archers, <laughs> one of my friends came in who's an archer, and... Told me about his experience of having this when he was 50, he's now 70. He's like a gay, a gay nurse shaved him down. I'm like, great. And um, I'm like, great. Thanks for your story. <laughs> so, I'm not panicking enough already. <laughs> so, anyway, so I'm on blood thinners, which are a tablet, which is fine to take. Anyway. Four days before the surgery, I've got to go off those and I've got to go to injections and they hurt. So it's an injection into your stomach and they hurt. So I'm going to move my sight down this inch. I'm going to move it across a little bit. So I'm not looking forward to the injections.
Okay, so how am I feeling about these arrows? I'm going to suppose I'm going to talk about a bit about letting my staff build stuff for me. Now, one reason I get my staff to build stuff for me is so I can see what their work's like and they can improve. Because obviously, I have to make stuff for their customers. And often, what you'll find is staff will have like parents or friends make stuff for them. So while they might be a good archer, they may not be doing their own stuff. So it's quite common for me to have my staff build strings for me. Um, it's quite common that I'll build my own strings, but um, it's more than common that I'll get my staff to build strings for me and I can test out what their strings are like and then give them feedback on it. It's how you improve. So I always recommend that my staff should be building their own arrows, building their own strings, learning stuff, because if it's no good, this is how they learn. Okay, so let's just talk about the victory verdict, how I've been shooting with it. Look, I would say that I haven't been well, I haven't been shooting as much as I used to when I shot the PSE Supra and the Citation stuff, where I used to shoot every night. Um, I've been shooting mainly recurve, but my scores are on par with the, what I shot with the Supra. I'm going to say they're not worse, maybe a little bit better, maybe, I don't know if that's because I'm stronger or or what, I feel like I can shoot good scores with this bow. I feel like it aims well on the center. Like that one, I don't know where it went, but it was just sitting in the middle and took the shot. And sometimes it's hard to compare because there's wind and you're trying to shoot. So some of those scores I shot, like I shot a 295, 297 out of 300, they were windy days. And it's very hard to compare those days with a still day. But I feel like I like the way the bow shoots. I feel like I like the way it holds and aims. I like the vibration. I feel the bow is very solid. Now, one thing coming out of surgery, I've been asked is about what panish bow am I going to shoot? Now, it's going to be three months until I can shoot after surgery. And surgery is on the 13th. <laughs> Lucky 13. One of my customers works in a hospital and I said to him, I said, how many cardiac beds do you have in your hospital? And he said, 24 beds, but number 13 doesn't exist, so it's really 23. He goes, it goes 12, 14. It's <laughs> like, okay, right. Okay, so what's the stuff I'm panicking about going to hospital? Well, you're obviously afraid of dying, but that's okay. Um, and it might sound silly, but you know I've never really been to hospital, so I'm not keen on the catheter idea. Um, I'm not keen on don't know how the whole toiletry thing works while you're in bed in the ICU while you're asleep. I'm not sure how that works. Um, so, I figure I've got three days where things aren't going to be much fun. Now, on some of these shots, I'm still feeling the blade touch the arrow rest. Um, so, I have moved the blade back a little bit. I feel like I've got to move it back a little bit further. And this is the thing, when you cut arrows, make sure you don't cut them too short. It's like, because then you just end up with arrows you can't use. It's always better to have arrows too long than too short. Anyway, let's shoot the last one and let's see where these arrows are.
So, oh, some of the things that worry me. So I won't be at the business. So I won't be able to drive for a month. Um, so that's a bit of an issue. How I get to the business and back again. Um, how I pay bills. So I get literally bills every day. And if I'm in ICU and in hospital, I'm not sure how I pay them. So that's an issue. These are the things you don't have to worry about if you're a public servant. If you're a public servant or just a wage earner and you need surgery, like you just go away and, I don't know, you know, sometimes you get sick leave, sometimes you don't. You don't have to worry about the ongoing stuff. Um, well, when you own a business, like you have customs coming in all the time and if you don't pay it on that day, then they send it back. It's like, oh. All right, let's go and have a look at that end. Okay, well, I'm pretty happy with that end. They're all pretty solid. Um, they felt good. And it's it's pretty hot out here. Um, like, I'm lots of, lots of sweat. Um, but my heart feels good. So my heart feels good. I'm not really feeling any pains across here at all. Um, or any. Um, I feel like I need a drink, but... I don't feel enough confidence to go and club and shoot um, because I think you know like a hundred arrows in a hot weather might be too much and that's where I work it out at home so I shoot a hundred arrows at home and see how I go um, now one of the issues with this is this summer and autumn's the prime time for shooting because it's the best weather and you basically lay it up because you're going to have hospitalization. Now, that's a bit of a bugger, but it is what it is. Um, better than dying. Because um, dying doesn't seem like a good option. Anyway, that's the ice point arrows. I'm pretty happy with those. I think I've got to move the rest a little bit and another little bit because I could feel it touching on the edge a little bit. Um, Look, I don't know about the collars at the front, whether it's worth it or not. Definitely worth it at the back. Shot a knockoff. Oh, this is the one where we had glue on the knock and it was hard to, it was hard to knock. So that one's not a bad one. Now, when you're making arrows, um, always use the same knocks because that way you'll have spares. So I didn't bother this time much because I, I was like, just make up something that we've got, you know, lots of spares with. Um, but normally I go for the same knocks as on all my arrows. That way I'm not changing anything. I'm not changing the gap in my D loop. Um, anyway, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. All the best for the new year and hopefully it goes well. Thanks for watching.